Category 5, Hurricane Milton is heading for one of Florida's most populous metropolitan areas. Yeah, Milton is forecast to weaken just a bit before making landfall, but it'll also grow its wind field and expand its life-threatening impacts over a larger area as it does. Ivan Rodriguez is live this morning in Tampa, Florida with the very latest. Uh, what has changed, Ivan, since we spoke with you yesterday? Well, Owen, Amy, the newest information we have right now, the official forecast calls for Hurricane Milton to make its landfall as a category four hurricane. There had been some back and forth there, whether it would make it as a three or a four. We now know it would make landfall, expected to make landfall as a category four hurricane, though the exact landfall location still uh, hasn't been uh, decided yet. Uh, we're still looking maybe a little bit south of Tampa, but again, it could begin uh, to move a little bit more now uh, between these next few Few hours. We're beginning to feel some of the outer bands, light rain, uh, not much wind right now, but those conditions are going to deteriorate, especially as we head into the midday hours. Tropical storm conditions by then. Later this evening, some parts of Florida's Gulf Coast could begin feeling some hurricane conditions as well. So Floridians here are really racing against the clock to finalize their preparations. Uh, officials have been urging them to still get out while they can. Uh, if not, the idea now now is to begin to seek shelter. Yeah, we wanted to uh, follow up on something, Ivan, that we talked about yesterday, which was a lot of the leftover debris from Helene, and I'm not sure what that situation's like in Tampa, and if, you know, they made enough progress, and at some point, obviously, they're going to have to stop and wait for the hurricane to pass. Mm -hmm. So what's the story today? Well, Owen, here in Hillsborough County, uh, that stop time is actually going to be a lot sooner than we think. At noon, they're actually going to stop debris collection. So uh, we're, we're looking at, what, five hours now? Mm -hmm. A little bit more than five mm -hmm. hours left of debris collection in the county where we are now in the Tampa Bay area. Uh, and there's still a lot of debris left just driving around yesterday evening. We're still seeing piles of debris in front of homes, in front of apartment complexes. We always knew that they weren't going to get all of it. It, it really was impossible to collect all of that debris that was left behind by Hurricane Helene. Uh, crews have been doing their best to get as most of that debris as possible, yeah. uh, but it, now it is gonna, it's really looking at the dangers attributed to that debris. When those winds pick up, uh, they could become dangerous projectiles, or they could impede uh, first responders when they're trying to uh, go through search and rescue, mm -hmm. or crews trying to restore power. So it, it really is incredible, and I've never really seen uh, or report on a hurricane prior to landfall, seeing so much debris already uh, yeah. on the roads and, and, and just really nothing to be done about it at this point. Even officials are urging and asking people to try to secure that debris as best as you can on your own. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What about the people, though? Are you seeing where you are now, people who are staying, or does it really kind of look like a ghost town where you are? Where I am now, it looks more of a ghost town, and it looked like that starting yesterday evening. A lot of windows of homes have been boarded up. Not too many people walking around anymore either. Uh, so we're going to see a little bit more people evacuate today. But uh, at this point and moving forward, a lot of uh, officials are asking people to seek shelter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with just a few hours remaining before it hits. Ivan Rodriguez, thank you so much for that report. Running out of time. I mean, I, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm shocked that he said they're stopping at 12 o'clock today. That they're still that they, doing yeah, it. Yeah, that they're still, still doing, doing it. it. Yeah. Stopped, yeah. Well, you I think it's not they like they can it. do it in the dark, and it's no. dark right now. Right. It's already raining. Right. Yeah. I, I, it's like, what, what, it's like, what are you going to even accomplish in these few hours of daylight? Mm -hmm. right. I know. I well, at this point, any, it becomes a safety issue. So I think that's going to be a big part of this story, too. And, and I he nailed it, is that I don't know that anybody's ever reported on a storm that's being hit after a storm had hit. Immediately. So there's close. all this debris out there yeah. at that point. The other part I want to bring up to everybody's attention, too, did you notice he was standing and it was like steady rain where he's at uh -huh. right now, too? So that's the beginning. So that's not even the storm. That's just sort of a, a, the, the front that came through here yeah. is, is creating a bit of a level leftover boundary and so you see all those showers and thunderstorms yeah out ahead of that that are already starting to soak their way here from Cape Coral 
south of there as you move on down towards, you know, Bradenton on up to the Tampa St. Pete area. The center of the storm, Milton, is way down here, right? And so it's still got hours to get closer to the coast. So conditions are going to start falling apart. Uh, so this is certainly something for folks that did decide they just want to kind of batten down. They are literally running out of time uh, to make sure that their last precautions are taken care of. These wave heights continue to rise as well. We're now up to 15 feet. These buoys that are sitting off of the western coast of Florida. I expect these numbers to start climbing into the probably 20s and 30s as the storm moves through. So we'll track it through the day today. Here's the latest advisory. We should get a new advisory probably within the next 30 minutes or so. 160 mile an hour winds, so it's moving northeast at 14 miles an hour. That puts landfall sometime late tonight as a category four. Now again, where exactly that hits? You heard Ivan a second ago say we believe that it may be a little further south of Tampa. Obviously, that doesn't mean that Tampa is going to be safe because a storm of this size with this much power and magnitude is likely going to do considerable damage from there to Cape Coral moving inland only 12 hours over Florida, right? But within that 12 hours, what kind of power outages are we looking at here across central Florida around the greater Orlando area before it starts to head back out into the Atlantic Ocean? So there's gonna be multiple story lines that we're gonna be following over the next 24 hours with this as well. Not only that, but of course the uh, push of water coming in. And again, if it hits towards Bradenton, maybe Tampa's closer to six to nine feet in terms of their storm surge because it's gonna be on the south end of the dirty side of the storm. Remember, dirty side is always the east and the southeast side of the storm. So if that's the case, we're talking about around Cape Coral here could see upwards of maybe 12 to 15 feet, and that's just unsurvivable if you're not in a safe and secure spot or if you did not evacuate. Here's our future track. This is our in-house model, what we call our 3K. Notice that by this evening, things really falling apart as it makes landfall, maybe midnight, 1, 2 a.m., and then quickly moving offshore, but not before drenching Jacksonville down towards Orlando, Daytona Beach. Cape Canaveral, all of those areas could be under the gun here and then quickly moving away. That's the one benefit of this is that we may be talking about a system that as it moves pretty quickly, unlike Helene, where it took days for the rain to finally stop and you can get crews in there into parts of, you know, southern Virginia, North Carolina, Tennessee, and then Georgia. This will likely be within 24 hours and Friday they'll be able to get in and get a good sense of what they're dealing with. But some of these rainfall totals here as well. There's, you know, Palm Harbor just north of Tampa up towards Daytona Beach. That's upwards of you know 10 12 feet so there's just a lot going on with all of this that we're going to be watching very carefully <laughs>